Okay, so what I have here is a box from um, the Arbor Day Foundation. And inside are two bare root aspen trees and one bare root red maple. They come packaged pretty much like this. They have a plastic uh, cover with a lot of moss around the roots. The trees are dormant and then they have little labels on them so you know which tree is which. The Arbor Day Foundation has a deal where if you spend so much money, you get a free red maple. So our red maple was free. Uh, red maple is not exactly a tree that we seek out for our property, but because it was free, we'll plant it somewhere. It's pretty to look at in the fall. The reason why we don't seek it out is because it's actually, if the animals eat the leaves, um, there's a toxicity, there's something about red maples that could hurt the horses or anything like that, so. When you get these, um, it's best to plant them right away. They suggest taking them out and soaking the roots in water. So what I'm trying to do here is separate these trees. They're, they're tied around the stems here. And I don't, I wouldn't even say that's moss that they had put in there. It's like some sort of recycled paper or something. I'm gonna go get a knife. I'm gonna let those soak while I do this. So aspens are trees that you wouldn't typically expect to grow in our growing zone. But I had good reason for getting aspens and I have reason to believe that they'll do okay. The first thing you have to realize about aspens is that they grow all the way from the most northern parts of North America to all the way down to Mexico. I mean, it's a wide ranging tree and they generally do better at higher elevations but they can grow almost anywhere. And if they like where they're growing, they spread. So they could be a little invasive. That means that you need to be careful where you plant them. Now we were at the North Carolina Zoo and they had an aspen growing. And that's what gave me the idea, hey, I want aspens on my property, I'm gonna try it. So the bare root aspens are right here. They're, they're smaller trees, but they'll grow real fast and then our red maples right here. Now I'm not gonna put the two aspens together. I'm gonna put one over on the side of our house and then I'm gonna put one over in an area where I think it's going to thrive. And hopefully they'll both thrive, um, but the one on the side of the house uh, should grow up and be a pretty quick tra uh, shade tree. These things grow over two feet a year. And I've heard of some of these uh, reaching 25 feet within seven years, which is just insane. It's a fast growing tree. I'm gonna plant one of the aspens down near our house. Um, we have an Alberta spruce, a dwarf Alberta spruce on the, on the side of our house. I'm gonna put an aspen a little further down. Aspens, even though their roots are expansive and then they pop up more trees along their root system, uh, they should not be able to damage the side of the house. They're fast growing. The roots are going to go to where they feel that they have the best chance of survival, which doesn't include the foundation of a house. Hardwoods, trees like that, that they're where the roots are uh, expanding out for just to support that tree, those roots can get very hard and damage the foundation of your house. But I, from what I've read about aspens, I don't think that they will. And I'm still putting these probably 10 or 15 feet from the house. So I think it'll be fine. It says to soak them, but these roots have been pretty damp for some time. Um, the biggest thing, the way that they had these packaged, is just kind of getting them apart so that you don't hurt the smaller roots, because that could hurt them. And again, these, these trees right now are dormant. They've been dormant. Uh, since the first freeze, wherever it is that they were grown. Obviously, with aspen trees, I did not get these from a local grower. Um, I don't know of anybody locally who grows aspens. There we go, now we got them separated. 
I'm probably going to take my smallest aspen and put it in the hard where I think it's going to ha have the hardest time growing just because what I've noticed with some of our transplants um, of eastern red cedar is that the smaller trees have been the most successful at adapting to their new environment and and then thriving so i'm going to put the smaller aspen where i think it's not going to do quite as well and i'm going to put the larger aspen in an area that i have uh, that i think it, it's going to thrive in this area right here is where i think our aspen is going to grow the best probably just a little more to my left here right in here a lot of moisture comes in through here it, it, you can see it kind of drains, it, it retains moisture right in there. So if these trees want to expand and grow, they'll probably uh, build a grove right along this ditch, which is fine because a lot of this is just evergreens. I've got a, um, a Carolina sapphire uh, cypress there, uh, eastern red cedars right behind me. And then, then there are eastern red cedars planted all along our fence line. So uh, having the, the white from the, um, the aspens, which could look really pretty right here. Um, they have full sun, or this one will, for most of the day. They like sun, they like my moisture, and that's why I'm choosing this particular spot right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and see what it's like digging down into this dirt. There we go, and that's a nice, there we go. And I've got some nice topsoil in here. Got this hole dug, and there's my aspen. I'm gonna try and plant the aspen kind of up high a little bit. So I'm gonna sprinkle in kind of my mixtures of topsoil and the natural topsoil that's down here. I want this thing to thrive, I want it to do well, and I'm hoping, I'm gonna kinda spread those that way. I'm hoping that as this grows, it spreads. I, I hope it, it really likes this location and more trees take off from this one. And this is an area of our property where we wouldn't mind an aspen kind of taking over and spreading out. The only thing it's gonna end up hurting is a peach tree that hasn't really done well in the past anyway. But even then, if, it, if this starts to grow really well and spreads, they get, they're gonna get tall and skinny. So the point facing the sun, there's, there's still gonna be a good amount of sunlight coming in underneath them here. They won't start blocking the sunlight from other plants for quite some time. And I do have the red cedar and the um, sapphire cypress behind me. But again, this is out towards the, the, the sun, which is where it wants to be, just in front of those. And that's where you really kind of have, up in the mountains, that nice contrast of the aspens with the dark greens behind it. They are, they're kind of a field tree. They, they grow out. They pioneer the, the land, and uh, as they take over and other trees slowly start to grow in, they, they tend to die off over time. I used more topsoil than I was hoping because this topsoil has just got a ton of roots in it. And once I put my cedar mulch down, I want this to have a nice area where there's not a whole lot of roots to compete with because I want this guy to start spreading his roots. Now the aspen should grow without a problem. I'm not concerned about the aspen growing. Uh, what will happen if you plant an aspen in an area where it's stressed from too much heat or anything, you're gonna lose a lot of that brilliant fall color that they have, but you'll still have a tree. And that's one of the, the things to uh, consider when you're, when you're planting this, <clears throat> are you attracted to the foliage in fall, or are you attracted to the white trunks of these trees? If you're down south, you might not get the brilliant color, at least not on years where you've had a lot of heat. 
but this should be doing pretty good. Now I'm gonna um, put, put some mulch down around it and build myself a little fence. I don't want deer or anybody nibbling on my, my aspens, my favorite tree that I'm planting here. Okay. Okay, so this aspen is gonna be going in right next to the house. Our soil here is a lot rockier than it was over there. This isn't the ideal location for one of these, but then again, they'll grow almost anywhere. So we use a little bit of topsoil in here and the topsoil I'm using has absolutely no uh, chemicals in it. It's it's not like a miracle grow because if you use a miracle grow, Winter. you could cause the tree to start growing prematurely. We don't want that to happen, um, especially being in a warmer environment than what it's um, typically used to. We want it to stay dormant and we don't want it to start growing during the winter time. I'm going to mix in as much of my topsoil as I can. Again, this is very, very rocky topsoil, but what is here as far as topsoil is nice and dark and moist. So that's a good sign. There's a lot of runoff that comes through here. So I think this tree is going to get plenty of moisture. And I think this hole that I dug will retain plenty of moisture, which will help it establish itself for the first few years. And then once it gets established and gets used to its new topsoil, it, it should grow like a weed. Now this location will get a lot of mid-afternoon to late evening sun. Which is good, these like sun. My tiny little aspen here, I've got lots of mulch around it. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and put up a little cage around it like I do on all my trees that I'm trying to help grow the first few years, just to keep the animals away.